hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Tammy Osterf, the designer of BadBobbin.com. I'm here today to show you how to make these makeup wipes. And I've got four different um, designs. They come, the four will be in the set all together. You can find it at BadBobbin.com coming soon. And we've got the wipe has a towel on the back side and flannel on the front. Cute little design in the front. You, there's multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to show you some of the ways, um, explain them when we get to the table with all the uh, fabrics and what you're going to need for this design. And besides being a makeup wipe, you can alternate it and make it a coaster if you want or a little mug rug. And instead of doing the towel on the back, like I explained at the end, um, that you can use either a felt or a vinyl. So they're pretty versatile. So you can do more than one thing with it, but originally it's for a makeup wipe. So let's head on over to the cutting table and see what we need to make our makeup wipes in four different designs by badbobbin.com. All right, I'm going to show you what we need to do our uh, makeup wipes. And I have my three different patterns printed out so I can kind of see the size and what's going to happen with them. So today I'm going to do the flower for you to show you the cutting of it as well. Like, um, and it's like an applique. So it's up to you on what you want to use. This is what I'm going to use when I do it. I've heard that different people use different things. Um, if you can't find one thing, then you can double another or use something else. So I'm going to do it in the 4x4 hoop to show you that it is easy and simple in this little hoop. Um, I use for small and for applique, I use my curved embroidery 4-inch um, scissors. There's also a small pair of um, applique type scissors. They have a little curved one. My lighter for the end for singeing. So I buy remnants. I never buy anything by the yard unless it's really on sale cheap. But 100% um, cotton flannel is what I'm going to use for one side so that it's soft. So these are all the different flannels that I have. Like I said, I buy remnants. I don't buy anything really by the yard. And I've cut my, um, I'm going to do the four different ones, but I'll do the flower today and show you. So I've cut my pieces five by five, and that's my flannel. So this is going to be the top on uh, one side. Then for the middle, I'm going to use a, um, a natural 100% cotton batting. So there's different names for it. I've written them down. I'm going to name a few of them for you. Um, like I said, I buy as a remnant. I did not buy this by the yard. I did not buy at full price. I bought a remnant, so always check your remnant little tip for you. Always check when you go to Joann's Fabric or any fabric store, they have a remnant section. Check it because I just got this for, you know, 50% off of whatever the, even even if it's a sale price, you'll get 50% off of the sale price. Make sure you can ask them about that. So there's like um, Nature's Touch. Um, there's Pellon, which they sell quite a few different ones. There's an iron on, there's a regular one. Pellon cotton batting. Warm and white is another um, name for it. Warm and natural is another name. Natural cotton batting. Um, if you get it by the yard, which was the natural touch, right here, natural touch. Um, this one is by Pellon also. This is by the yard, and it's, um, I think, on sale right now at Joann's, but not when you see this video. But you can always find it or use a coupon, and it's $10.99 a yard. But like I said, remnant found it for a remnant so that'll be my my middle so when I'm doing it I'm going to have my uh, flannel on top and the cotton batting will be in the center to give it some little padding and towel um, this happens to be left over from me doing uh, baby bibs and burp cloth so I used that for the backing of those so I had leftover I didn't throw them away it was just a piece that couldn't get a, a bib out of it but I was able to cut my five by five pieces so my bottom piece is going to be a towel. So the bottom piece will be the towel. I have the batting in the middle, and then I have my flannel on the top. If you don't find the batting or can't find the batting, you can do two layers of um, the flannel if you want. Um, I've heard some do two towels and a flannel on top. So it's up to you, different things, whatever, however you want to make this. It's entirely up to you what you want on each side. You can use a microfiber. I know Joanne sells it. Um, I had it when I was making little uh, burp bibs, spit bibs uh, for my grandson. They have a really thin microfiber that can be used on one side. It's really kind of soft. Um, I use the tearaway. There's also a tearaway washaway, which um, I also have that too. 
that can be used and then when you wash these really good that tear away is just going to end up washing out of the center of them so there's um, a really thin light tear away is what I'm using um, as this gets wet and used in your uh, towel it'll start loosening up and, and not be as stiff so there's also uh, if you want, it, it won't be very good because we're going to be doing a satin stitch around uh, around it. This is going to be a satin stitch. So we need to cut this out like an applique so that that satin stitch will go around the edges. But you can, you know, if you don't have the tear away and you think you can cut close enough or don't mind that little edge, you can also use um, a water-soluble stabilizer if you want. And when it gets to the end of the water soluble, it'll wash away as well, or the edges will wash away for you and make a clean, nice look. So there's different different ways, different uh, things that you can use as the stabilizer. So we can use the cutaway, I'm sorry, uh, wash away. We can use the wash away or tear away wash away, and I'm just going to use a regular lightweight tear away right now. And we have all our pieces, so I'm going to head on over to the sewing machine and we'll see how this is made. So I will catch you over at the machine. Okay, we're at the machine. We have all our stuff. I'm going to do um, the flower for my first one to show you. And I have everything ready to go. The color stops. I'm doing all one color. And I'm going to, you don't have to since it's in the 4x4 because you already know where to place it. But I'm going to run every stitch so that you can see exactly what happened. So the first one is a placement stitch. Just in case you do like four or five in a large hoop, that's why you have that placement so you'll know where to put your uh, material. And we'll start that with the first stitch, our placement line. So we have our placement line. And the first thing um, I'm going to put down is going to be my layer of my 100% natural, my batting. Or if you don't have the batting, you can do two flannels or just not have a batting and be a little bit lighter. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm not going to use any sprays or anything, so I'm just going to lay that in there. and It'll kind of stay where it's at. And the next one's going to be a tack down to go around the flower. And then it's going to do... Um, the pattern inside. So let's start that. So that step was our um, was our pattern for the inside. Um, it's up to you. You can leave the pattern from the inside out. We can skip that step if you want, if you don't want that stitching in there. But it gives a little bit of a quilting type stitch. So it's up to you if you want the pattern or you can go without the pattern. There's so many options and varieties that you can make these with. So our next step is going to be uh, tacking down our back piece, which is going to be our towel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, tape this one. I don't use my tacky this time. So I'm going to go ahead and tape down the towel. And I'm, I don't need to put very many because I have my table here. If you don't have a table and you're working with just the arm, then yeah, you'll want to put that little extra tape because it's going to end up hanging. So, and I'll set that back into the machine with the towel behind it, making sure it doesn't get caught underneath. Everything's straight. I look up, look underneath. And this is going to be our tack down for our towel. And it needs to stop because now we, after that tack down, we need to cut it out. Okay. All right. So our next step now is I'm using my uh, four inch curved. And I'm going to start on the back, remove our tape, and 
and we'll go carefully. We're going to cut around uh, our stitches cut, and make sure you, um, why I use these, they snip really good um, when I go around into that corner. We want to get into that little corner there of the flower. So I want to make sure these snip really good into the corner. You want to get as close to the stitching as possible. And you want to uh, have a, your design up on the top side of your blade up here and cutting with the part you're holding at the bottom. You're going to be cutting clockwise. All right. Almost done here. And then we got that. Clear away any um, little fringes that are hanging out. You want to be careful rubbing it. Don't want too many little things hanging out on your edges, but um, there we go. So that's the back side, and now we're going to go ahead and cut the front part. Same thing as close to the stitch line as possible. All right, so we cut that and we cut it as close as we can and we snip, made sure we snipped into these corners really good because we wanna, uh, don't want anything hanging out. And double check, go through, make sure everything's really close to the stitch line. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and do our, um, our last two steps, but I'm gonna put a stop in between it so that I can double check it. The next step is going to kind of keep those edges down with a V-stitch. Here I'm going to double check, make sure everything's stitched right. I don't have anything hanging too far out. If we do, we're going to cut that off because we don't want it sticking through our satin stitch and check the back, and the back's good too. I'm going to cut these little strands off really quick. And that way they won't be hanging out on our satin stitch. So it is inevitable that some of these little things will stick through the satin stitch, so it is, um, you know, acceptable. It'll be okay. Every little loop of your towel will not uh, be tucked in. All right, everything's good. I'm going to put it back in the machine and run our final satin stitch. Okay. We're all finished. We've done our satin stitch. Before we take it out of the hoop, we want to make sure everything worked good. Uh, another th option that's um, up to you is if you want to use the same color on the back side or just stay with your white bobbin. I stick with the white bobbin and it's not too bad. Um, you can use any color towel also that you want. And we all look good. And I will see you over at the cutting table. We're back at the cutting table. I have another one too. I've made four. So the one we just did, I'm going to pop it out of the hoop and I'm going to remove all the stabilizer. Okay, and we've removed it all and there's some little uh, stragglies from the uh, 
towel coming out or a little bit like fuzz from the stabilizer that comes out. I'm going to take my 4 inch and really careful, 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 I'm going to stress this really good on you guys, careful cutting so that you do not cut your loops on your satin stitch. If you cut one loop, then it's all just going to come undone and fray and it's going to be really hard to even try to get that back together. You won't be able to. So I go along just really lightly just on top to get rid of some of them. I kind of have an idea doing it after so many years as to how how hard or how light I am on top of it and what, you know, not to cut and to cut. We'll trim a little bit just to get some of that off of there. Not too much. All right. Then I'm going to take my lighter. And this is where really kind of quickly, it's just to get the fuzz from the stabilizer off of it. I'm just going to go around kind of quick, just enough. You don't want to hold it for too long. There we go. And since just enough to get uh, that little fuzz away from there. So we're all good. There we go. So I have all four. The flower, the circle, the hex, and our heart, and towel on the back. I have a flannel on the front. I have that natural in between. These can also be done as coasters too if you um, want to do a vinyl on the back or um, a felt on the back and then do the front. You don't have to put the natural inside. You can put a, bat a, a different type of batting inside. Uh, fiber fill if you want, or none at all actually. You can just leave it plain and make it a little mug rug or a little coaster too as well. But these ones were meant for the uh, makeup wipes and we've got four sizes that are available. And there we go. A simple, easy design. Simple little cute gift to give to a girl or whoever you want. So thanks for joining me. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit that bell, you'll get more notifications and Thanks for joining me. See you at the cutting table.